So we were a full width broad acre tillage business and it was successful. Why did we change? We ran into a problem. When we harvest ended, the rain stopped and the rain wouldn't start again until late August. So my question was, what can we do to have more plant available water? We were full acre tillage or broad acre tillage for all the processing crops, mainly because you needed to be. But we did get into strip tillage in about 2015-2016. Um, a neighbor of mine across town kind of lent me a piece of equipment. We tried it; it worked. And we went and bought our own two years later, and we're full strip tillage on our corn, sugar beets. We figured out how to adapt the strip tiller and the planter to successfully strip till tomatoes, and we've been doing that for five years. Our introduction to strip till was in the fall of 2015. Southwest Ag had a machine, actually a soil warrior, they brought down and did 125 acres for us in corn ground, soybean ground, and wheat ground. It gave us an opportunity to grow a number of different crops, uh, different soil types, to, and we learned what was successful and what was not successful. What was really successful is there was no yield drag. The strip tilling fits in to all the crops. We strip till corn, we strip till sugar beets, and we strip till tomatoes. So we run a Soil Warrior. It's a 16-row machine with, uh, that can be changed. You can run deep cogs in the fall. We're now running mini cogs in the fall. Uh, and then you can run it in a shallow configuration in the spring. Most of our strip tillage is done in the fall. Uh, we do some in the winter. If we don't get it all done, we'll do some in the winter. We have a few farms that are either sand or floodplain that we will strip in the spring. We grow corn, soybeans, wheat, some edible beans, green beans, lima beans, and sweet corn. The rotation is dependent upon soil type. We strip till everything. We're not experts at strip tilling green beans and lima beans yet. We're working on that. Since we started strip tilling, we run an, an Orthman One Tripper, which is a shank machine. We try to make all of our strips in the late summer and into the fall. We do spring strips with the Orthman units, but we remove the shank and put a double colder in place of the shank. So we're basically freshening the strip up, loosening some dirt up and blending some fertilizer in because we're after that flower pot effect where we're planting those tomato transplants and we're after that flower pot effect in corn and sugar beets where we're planting the seed and its roots are gonna get into a high fertility zone. So if I'm planting tomatoes after a wheat crop, we are gonna use the rye, oat, hairy vetch mix only between the rows and then you end up with a nice rye strip in the spring and again, we're not working where those rye strips are, we're working in between them and being very successful. The rye cover crop has actually greatly improved our weed control in tomatoes over the years. When we're strip tilling vegetables and thinking about cover crops, you got to think about a lot more stuff. Um, one, today you can't have any grain that's going to end up in the package. Uh, two, chemicals are different when you talk about vegetables versus uh, commercial crops. Three, weed control. And do we have weed control figured out perfectly? Absolutely not, Mark. Yeah. As you can verify, Mark, the investment in technology is huge. We steer our strip till machine because it's a toad machine. We steer our primary planter because it's a toad machine. Uh, we're running RTK guidance on each piece of planting equipment. There's a lot of great people uh, here in Ontario that are doing this work and are happy to share with you their experiences, both good and bad. Talk to the resources you already use every day, your chemical reps, your agronomist at your local input supplier, your private agronomist if you use one, your neighbors. What I've noticed when we've got into strip tillage, by keeping compaction out of the row, we're seeing yields go up significantly. We're just growing much better crops on those tougher soils. We don't have any wheel traffic. We don't have any tillage compaction. And the crops are responding.
there's always going to be margin compression in our industry. What do we have to do? We have to grow good crops on a continuous basis. I'm trying to remove variability. And at the end of the day, we'd like the soils to be better tomorrow than they are today. But it's a journey that I think is well worth the time spent. Do your research, find out all you can about what you want to do, how you can accomplish that and what's available to get that done. And then start your journey with lower expectations perhaps than you may have had. And I'm not talking about a lower yield or I'm not talking about a poor quality crop, but you're not going to see the dramatic effects in year one that we may have mentioned in our conversation here today. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to realize the ultimate goals of having a healthier, better soil and still maintain the productive capacity of the land that you're working with. But strip till helps.